Hi, Gina. Welcome. I'm bad. I'm really bad. Oh, her attorney looks gorgeous. Can you imagine getting up every day and having to curl your hair like that? That is a lot of work. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just too much work. Unless she sleeps with the rollers in, but that could be. Cat, she couldn't look any worse, that's for sure. <laughs> now we just need the judge and a jury. Oh, jail has not been kind to her. No, no. She has put on in the last two years at least 50 pounds or probably more. Um, she, it's, she claims that she spends 23 hours a day in her cell and she's only allowed out one hour a day, which I find hard to believe because we know she was good friends with... Um, that girl that got off for murder. Well, she got found guilty of murder and then she was released because she's a minor. But um, what was that? Her, what was her name? I forgot. She was, she was on the witness list, but she was never called. But Jennifer actually helped her write her, the speech that she read uh, during her sentencing hearing. Here we go. I'm going to put myself inside the, Mute my mic. Remind me to unmute it. Case number 222799-990-FH. Good afternoon, Karen McDonald, on behalf of the people. Thank you, Marquise, on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, I'm Shannon Smith, on behalf of Jennifer Crumbly, who sits to my left. Are you ready for the jury? Yes. All right, I'm going to ask uh, when the jury reads their verdict after that, I want everyone to remain seated. It's up to you. It's up to you. I just, I really want the audience to stay seated after when the verdict's read after that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can stay in all right, for the That is correct. I am. Could you please read your verdict? Um, individually? Sure. Okay. Um, on count one of involuntary manslaughter, as to Madison Baldwin, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count two of involuntary manslaughter in regards to Tate Muir, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. On count three, as to involuntary manslaughter regarding Hannah, Hannah St. Juliana, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. And 
of involuntary manslaughter against Justin Schilling. We find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Thank you for allowing me to see it. And I'm going to see if always hold the jury. Juror seat number one, was that and is that your verdict? It is. Juror in seat number two, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number three, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number five, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number six, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number seven, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number eight, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number 11, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number 12, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number 13, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number 14, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Juror in seat number 16, was that and is that your verdict? Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that this is one of the hardest things you've ever done. I'm going to ask you to return uh, to the uh, jury room. Uh, your, uh, the two remaining alternates are also going to join you, and I'll be with you in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. All rise for the jury. Seated. Um, as we both, and um, considering uh, April 9th at 9 o'clock in the morning for sentencing, in fact. This should be fine, Judge. Thank you. Yes, April 9th at 9 o'clock is fine. Thank you. All right. um, I'm going to ask that everyone remain seated uh, while the defendant is taking out the court. Okay. All right. <laughs> are the parents of the victims that they the gentleman there with the glasses that's justin schilling's father So she is set to be sentenced on April 8th. What will happen at that time is she will be allowed to address the court. The victims will be allowed to make statements. The parents of the victims will be allowed to make statements um, and they probably will. So it'll be a very emotional sentencing. Um, I'll be sure and cover that. That means we have to get up early here on Central Time <laughs> and in California. Um, but she's facing up to 15 years on each count, which will probably run concurrently. Um, keep in mind, she's already served two years, so she'll get credit for time served. Um, her sentence could be as as little as, you know, as the time she has served. You know, who knows? I don't. My feeling is she's not a danger to the public. You know, she has no more children. 
She probably will never have anything to do with a gun again. So, and despite everything I've heard about this case, I think it came down to that math paper. I, I think the math paper was the clincher. You know, she didn't look in his book bag. She didn't ask him where the gun was. Nobody asked him where the gun was. Now, I'm curious if these, if the school personnel are going to, you know, are they, are they free and clear? The school personnel, the dean and the counselor who had him in their office, who had possession of the book bag and the gun and then gave it back to him. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we'll see what's next for those, those people that were at the school. I, I suspect that, that if they haven't been charged yet, they're not going to be charged, but who knows? The female prosecutor, she is the state attorney. Um, she usually you'll see an assistant state attorney try the case, um, but she is the actual prosecutor for the uh, for Ox or whatever this location is, this county. I, I agree, Sue. I agree, that especially the dean. Why did you let him walk away? Why did you let him walk? Why didn't you ask him? Did, why didn't you ask the parents? Does he own a gun? Does he own the gun that looks like this one on the map, math paper? Um, and they didn't do that. And then when they had the backpack there in your hand and you thought it was kind of heavy because he made a comment, he said it was a joke, but uh, you thought it was kind of heavy. Why didn't you uh, look in it? And that would come down to whether the jury believed he had reasonable suspicion to search that backpack. And I think they would find that he did. So we'll see. We'll see. So any questions, guys? I'm going to go back to listening to the Traconis trial. Um, I'll either put together a show today or tomorrow on, on that. I want to give you an update on that trial. When does the dad go to court? I want to say it's either it's in March or it's in May. It's something that starts with an M. <laughs> I can't remember. I want to say March but I could be wrong. So we'll see. March. Sue said March. Sue's, got, Sue's right about everything. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. March. And I think if anything, he's more, more culpable than she is. You know, he bought the daggone gum gun. Oh, well. And she kept saying, you know, he's responsible. I wonder if she would testify against him. <laughs> hey, I'm going down. You're going down with me. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting, though, because she, of course she's going to appeal because this is a case of first impression. And uh, she, this is going to sit in the courts for a while and she will sit in jail while it works its way through the courts. Interesting, fun fact for today, guys. The um, Washington courts have found that Donald Trump has no immunity from criminal liability for what happened in January 6th. So they can go after him now for uh, with charges stemming from January 6th. I'm like, woohoo, that's a criminal case I would definitely cover, except it's probably federal and yeah. But he was claiming he had presidential immunity, and they're like, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> that immunity only stems to civil liability. So you can't sue a president civilly, but you can go after them criminally, according to the courts. So I found that fascinating, fascinating. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in and watching this with me. If you're watching back on the replay, let me know you stopped by. And I love you all. See you in the next episode of Crafting and Crime Daily. Bye.